Today we're talking about nine things you should know or consider when getting married. I am joined today by my beautiful wife. Where is she? <laughs> She's sitting here <laughs> in the studio and we had the... Uh, Kim, you want to introduce yourself, please? Hello. My name is Kim. <laughs> 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 I am Kimberly. I am the wife of the big head. Do they know you have a big head? <laughs> It, it depends on, <laughs> on whether they watch the podcast. Yeah, or, or whether they watch the podcast. So that's one of the reasons that. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, I don't, I don't want to get into too much of banter with you. You know how things could easily just go off real with you. Mm-hmm. Today we're talking about nine things to consider when you're getting married, particularly in Trinidad and Tobago. We are going to talk about our experience. We got married in 2015 in Trinidad and Tobago. What? Did uh, you do you, your you're research? Fantastic. You know, I, I just <laughs> went back to. Um, Google Photos, and I pulled up some pictures from <laughs> the day we got married. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's 2015. Something was telling me it was 2016. Somebody asked you that question last week, and you could not. Yeah, it was stole. So thank, <laughs> thank goodness for that person, too, as well. So the, these nine things to consider have to do with planning your wedding day. It doesn't necessarily address the wedding day itself. And we hope to share our experience in terms of actual prices we would have paid, what the experience was like, things to consider, maybe different ways that you could save yourself money. And we hope that you get a lot of value out of this episode. So let's get started. And and we'll we'll start with the typical one that people always tell you. And it is about choosing the right partner. And that's, trust me, that's uh, one of the things you want to give serious consideration to because... When you make mistakes along those lines, I mean, seven years later, I'm still paying the price for it. So we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. You have to choose who you're, you're going to be doing this journey with. Because just like any group project that you've had and you had to do all the work for, if you choose the wrong partner, <laughs> planning this wedding is going to be a nightmare. Because you'll have no help. And they'll get all the credits. And I feel that's kind of like, that was your experience <laughs> When we get married. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And, and it's true because there were just things that were just happening on your side. And is it kind of cultural? Is that something specific to Trinidad and Tobago that the bride's no. side would kind of typically handle oh, things? Well, or, yeah. In terms I mean, of your family is definitely more competent than mine, so it doesn't actually work out that way. <laughs> no, no. I think it's yeah, a cultural thing in terms of the wedding itself. The Gale side in terms of like uh, historical Indian weddings. Um, East Indian weddings that they would have all of the events at the bride's home because the groom would be leaving his home to pick up the bride so that's where that would have originated from but I think generally around the world women end up doing most of it because they are the ones who care (laughs) they are the ones who probably have dreamt of getting married since they was yeah since they were small and watching Disney princesses getting married in the end with the big ball gown and thousands of people whoever and it's, it's something that you idolize and you look forward to the day that you get to do it so i feel like you either have two stances as a bride you either want like you're real into this wedding or you're just like yeah let, let me go and elope let me go to maracas and eat some bacon chaka and see I do. which is kind of exactly the sentiment that i had because while we were planning the wedding there are a lot of things you have in terms of where you're going to live building a house and um i i was kind of picked in a, a beach wedding with maybe a doubles man and <laughs> bacon shark so that and not even bacon which shark, i wasn't so that, against <laughs> it. i wasn't against it i just wanted to make it possible for my family to get there and i was like how are we gonna get these old old people to maracas yeah <laughs> i mean you could probably save money that way but but it's a serious consideration in terms of the the spouse that you have, your fiancé, and because it's, it's, it's a big journey. I, I could think about a lot of things, even as a guy, uh, that didn't feel as important to me as it did to you. And maybe I, I hope I'm not using the wrong choice of words there, but it had little things like, okay, like, let me say print in the wine the, the, the pictures to put on the wine bottles to have on the table, different type of events. Um, it didn't. If the, the venue didn't seem like a a big deal to me, the and I mean looking back on it, I realized that there may have been a number of instances where 
I would have even cheated you as, you know, that kind of... Oh, I thought you said cheated on No, no, no not definitely <laughs> not, not cheated on you. That is I'm one of the mistakes that uh, I, I wouldn't make and get catch with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you better not. You better hide it good. <laughs> so that is, that's, that's a real thing. And I, I think um, when I think about other men have heard getting married and they, that how they relate to that part of the experience is usually like a kind of nuisance and is a... If you're a guy listening to it, you know, give give serious consideration to all the Disney cartoons that your future wife grew up seeing. And, you know, is 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 their moment too. They might want to take it to the Just beach. Ha- you don't have to have much input in her because I could guarantee you she's probably not going to agree with half the decisions you might like. It's just to say, nod and smile and say, hey, that's real cool. That's sounding nice. Or maybe just choose the less... The, the one that you're least uh, affected by. <laughs> so is is is, 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 is there a particular moment when in planning for a wedding that you didn't feel supported on some particular vision or dream you may have had? Well, there's something about me um, that I block out certain parts of my life that I just choose not to remember. So I can't specifically <laughs> point it out now because I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I think I felt like that at at least two or three times doing the planning and you know there's just so much you have to organize i mean i was the one searching amazon for different things trying to organize the pictures to put on the the bottles and it's like well we need pictures well we don't need pictures let me just take a picture on your road or something. and it's like no we, we need we don't have any good pictures together <laughs> we need one with your face and my face actually in the same frame so it's just, you, you need the support sometimes. You think about a photographer. Okay, what you hired a photographer for? Let me just call so-and-so and get him a phone and let him take some pictures. So. <laughs> <laughs> because that was the one thing I tell you. It's like, don't give me no crickets. Yeah, don't give yeah, me any okay. crickets. Right. Don't give me any crickets. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> But, but, so but, choose your partner, right? Because you could either be here in crickets <laughs> or you could be having fun. <laughs> and, and I guess you, you really have to establish what is important to you. Eh? And then you have this, because I mean, like you're, you're talking there about the idea of the, the fairy tale type wedding. And then you have other commitments in terms of the the home that we were trying to build for ourselves that, you know, we, we fortunately reach a, a good way into it so far. So when you have, you really need to have some kind of harmony and get the intersection of different things that are important with your partner. And I'm using this opportunity to apologize to you. I, I could have done a lot better. And Thank you, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I understand. I've gotten accustomed. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about invitations because we, back when we did invitations... We went to a traditional printer. Is somebody I worked with in the past, graphic scripts, and I remember... Big we, up graphic scripts. Yeah, big, big up graphic scripts. <laughs> I've done a lot of work with them in the past. That is not sponsored, but we enjoy. I always enjoy working with them, and I have been working with them since 2008 in my capacity as a writer. So graphic scripts, we went there, and uh, I, I don't know which one is the applause button. I'll clap for you. Hey. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And... So we go to graphic scripts and we probably had it in mind. How much was our like guest list? How many people we were catering for? Initially, like when you plan it, you're on about what, 300, 400 people? So I will give you another um, little tidbit here. Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google whatever is your best friend. Because I am looking at our list. From 2014 wow. that hey. I have here. And I'm looking at the RSVPs. I'm looking at the days remaining because I had a countdown. It's been 200, 2,860 days since we got married, apparently, according to Google Sheets. 2,860 <laughs> days since we got married? <laughs> yeah. That is terrifying. Because I had a countdown and it's right now the days remaining is on negative 2,860 yeah, so this guest list I'm seeing here is 111. That's just the individual people, but then you have the plus ones. So I think it had come up. Where's my total? But yeah, um, 308. So 308 uh, people. And, and Kimberly's actually 
basically talking about something that we have listed as point three, which is the apps that you could be using, right? Yeah. And so, so that's a that's a real crucial thing because it involves you perhaps being able to save a lot of money. So let, let, let's make that a point number two because I was starting to talk about the printouts and the invitations. Mm -hmm. And as usual, you just jump ahead to point three because you thought that's what we <laughs> no, should be talking no, about. No, no, no. Okay, okay, <laughs> let me get back to my point. So my point is your invitations, you first of all make friends with Google Sheets and list out everybody you want at your wedding. Everybody, everybody. Then you narrow it down. You cut down. You have You start with immediate family on both sides. Then you go with close friends. Then you go with friends. Then you go with colleagues or anybody else. You probably know me or anything. But you have those labels and you go with that. And if you need to cut down, you cut down accordingly. And it, it will already be in order that you could cut down. Or you could check your RSVP. Apparently, I did an RSVP. I forgot. So the people who RSVP'd was 308 and my total was 357. So, yeah. Once you have that limb, that amount of people, you could probably end up with like 400 something because we realized we both have big families. So just family alone was coming up to like 150, which was crazy. <laughs> That's not even a small wedding with just family. So you have to look at your list. And then whittle it down to how much your venue can accommodate. And then how much people could come. Some people might be in the country. Some people might be able to make it. So you cross those off. And then you could add more people. But you don't delete your list. You always keep your list as a little bank. In case you, you always have some space for somebody else to come. Because you're always telling like, somebody, say, hey, you're getting married, you're getting married boy. And then you'll be like, uh, yeah, fall through the... <laughs> fall through the floor <laughs> but but tell me something what is because you mentioned this google sheets mm -hmm. why would you use google sheets versus excel spreadsheet because when i'm finished with excel i have to email that to myself so i could access it from a different device if i use google sheets i could update it from my phone while i'm at work i could update it from a computer i could update it from your phone i could update it anyway if I have an idea, if I want to invite, if I want to add somebody to the list, I don't have to wait until I'm home. I could just do it anyway. That's why you use Google Sheets because they have the online servers to save your information. The cloud. <laughs> so and, and and it's a fantastic idea. Thanks so much for sharing that because you you think even about like Google, things that we use on the cloud today to even help with things like your grocery list, your Google oh, yeah. Keep. Your spreadsheets. How you so think you can make groceries for me is because exactly. I use Google Keep and I keep updating you. That's why they call it Keep. I keep updating you. Hold on. <laughs> no, no, no. You need the wop wop wop. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the yellow. All right. No, the yellow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. The... So yeah, fantastic. And I could just imagine when I'm in the grocery and you just, you know, like you just keep on like, wait, this dummy pass this item he on this lane here oh he now get the grips so yeah fan fantastic <laughs> application in terms of managing your your work remotely being able to share it with that guy that is suddenly more interested in the wedding because he's listened to my advice and he say you know i really <laughs> need to pay more attention to this this lady here and her yes, interest it, in this syndrome all you wedding. have to, a tip number one for guys when you're getting married as soon as you give the list say hey do you use google sheets just um share the list with mana so i can Keep track or I can ah, add something. Ah, like, like you get 10 points right there. <laughs> 10 points right there. This right man really is real supportive, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let, let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> invitations. That's the mm -hmm. point I was mentioning, the second point. And we went to the traditional printer. And well, I, can't, I don't remember the cost of it because I, if I remember correctly, given the, the working arrangement, what he said is that he will do the invitations for us. Yeah, I think so he did, did, we, did we even pay for the paper? Did we pay for the paper? We I, I do remember. I so I don't remember. want to cheat him, so let's assume that we get everything free. Yeah. <laughs> and he, I think I do think he, he gave it as a gift, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So we, we can't really say what the cost of that may have been, 
But when we look back on the experience, I did something really stupid because I probably thought that it was 400 people coming to the wedding. I was like, all right, cool. Well, we need 400 invitations or at least 380. <laughs> but somewhere along the line, you realize, wait, wait, wait. One of these invitations may be going to a household that has five people in it. <laughs> so, you know, really. We had enough. Yeah, really. We had enough and some was in a drawer for a it's very a long time. It's a good thing you didn't pay there. for it. A good thing I didn't pay for it, poor fella. <laughs> And he, he was just doing the maths and saying, this fella could write, but he's very wedding, slow, you know? Big wedding, boy. <laughs> <laughs> at that rate, at least 800 yeah. people would be coming to the wedding. But you could save money to do those invitations, um, apart from knowing the guy who, who you're printing it at, by designing it yourself. Because I think there's some big money in design right now. People charging. I, I don't know the, the cost of hand because I haven't had to ask anybody recently, but... It could it could be a couple hundred, maybe thousands. I don't know. But you could save that money, you just go on Canva is a free tool, another another app to add to your phone. Free tool, free pictures, and you just go and you make your thing. And it will be personal to you because you will know what you want and what you like. You go on Google, you look for some examples and you try to do something similar. And you put like five different ideas in the same thing. You may not be the best artistic person or anything but canva makes it easy and if you pay somebody they just most likely going to be using canva anyway to come up with something and give to you and then charge you a couple hundred dollars for it so and, and, and here the thing when you go on canva you have these templates that you could download already so you done could just yeah and you even, just change your names <laughs> even if you see the pro options that are available mm -hmm. to you you see all right this pro option is costing me a dollar 99 buy it <laughs> buy it so you'll have something that you know because imagine people come to you and it's like wait now we see this invitation at our wedding we went to last <laughs> <laughs> so you know you could spend the dollar 99 cents buy one of the pro templates mm -hmm. and easily so canva is an app you could check out also adobe express which is something oh, you has do the free trial and you get it free for the month and you, you save it, it and <laughs> fantastic and yeah. you were talking about we living in an era now where people just appreciate getting things digitally Yep. So your your aunt who is 84 years old and you're wondering if she will make it to the wedding, you, you could print out a copy for yeah, her. Yeah, print, print like 25 or 20 or 15 even. And you give to the old aunties who don't know how to use a computer or their Facebook. But every auntie now sending you good morning messages. So they know how to use it. But for the ones who really, really not tech, tech, tech savvy, then you just print out a couple and you give it to them and they will keep it in the, the bag with all the thousands of um wedding invitations they have saved up for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they put it on and say, I went to this wedding in <laughs> Included in all the, the photo albums <laughs> in yeah. this big suitcase. Uh, Eric Williams was still the prime minister. <laughs> uh, also, you mentioned Pinterest and Amazon before we started oh, yeah. recording this podcast as two of the tools that you were using seriously are only time we got married so so tell me a little bit about the role that pinterest and amazon paid, played for you are we on the third the third point now or the second still uh, this is perhaps the no well, apps apps that help pinterest amazon oh this is yeah yeah, yeah this this is the this is kind of like the third point okay still. cool yeah just want to know what area to hit it from so i would have you could hit it from anywhere <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> keep those, going. those jokes always hit. Keep, keep going. <laughs> so um <clears throat> I, you download Pinterest. I you you could even start now. You don't need a man or you don't need a wife <laughs> to make you start. You could just start pinning things that you like. If you don't know what Pinterest is, it's just like a big Google that you could keep all the pages that you like. You could pin them to your personal page. And you keep all the information that you want to have accessible in your page. Pictures in particular. Pictures in particular that could link to a website. So you go and you search for whatever and they already have all of these things categorized for you. So if you want to look at weddings, you click weddings. If you want to look at invitations, you click invitations. Or you, or you just search for whatever you want and you look at the ones you like. You get ideas to design your invitations. You get ideas for where you want your wedding, how you want your wedding. You want an indoor wedding, but you want it to look outdoorsy. You want an outdoors wedding, but you do a rain. And you don't want a big bamboo tent outside. So you get different ideas from these things. You learn about um, favors, like what is a good favor, cheap 
DIY favors to save some money there. And it's just an amazing tool because Pinterest has everything. I put, I use Pinterest for everything. When somebody wants a cake, Haley wants a cake. Uh, Mommy, I want a Batman cake. Pinterest, you go on Pinterest and you find, I mean, yes, you could do it on Google, but then you have to go and save the pictures to your phone. You're using up space there. You're looking for the picture and you can't find it. So Pinterest is just a nice way to have everything you want. And it's accessible from anywhere, not just one device. Any device, you could access it. So these boards that you have, you could easily, like your Google Keep file, you could easily share it with someone so that they could have access to it as well. Yep, your boards could be public or they could be um, locked to you and you could invite somebody to view your board. So I, <laughs> I'm going to call it out now. I used to have a, a board with Surya for when she was going to get married. So she would add stuff and I would add stuff. And I think they helped her at her wedding because I saw a lot of the things that we had in there in the wedding itself. I mean, she got married during COVID, so she couldn't do everything. <laughs> and we had to watch the wedding from a computer, but I still saw different aspects of it coming. In. So is real real nice tool especially if you can't be with somebody physically all the time it's a good way to share so again fellas tell your girl start a pinterest board or add stuff to her pinterest board and she'll be so happy but don't mess it up don't delete anything because you'll get both up i'm still waiting you know you say all that but i'm still waiting for the part on um amazon uh, no how how, how are you going to call them out what are you calling them out on you yes you say you're going to call them out on something with surya i'm gonna call surya Oh, oh, call Surya. I was like, you're going on call mode. So I like listening to all this wonderful knowledge. And I was like, what are you going on call me out for? What's why No, Surya is one of my bridesmaids. One of my friends from a very long time ago. And she actually took our engagement pictures that I reshared today because it was how many years ago today? Eight years ago today that she took those pictures. Um, 2015. Yeah, so today, the 14th of March, 2015. And and that's some well anyway, that's not really planning for the wedding, but that's when you went to last week first beach in Trinidad. Yeah, that was planning for the wedding. That was planned yeah, taking yeah, the yeah, pictures yeah. to put on the bottle. Wow, fantastic yeah. boy. Because you know how you really had a lot of kind of personalized touches to it. The the, the wine bottles had pictures of me straining to lift you up on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not because I was heavy, that's just because you were weak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was the fittest I ever was when we got married uh, because I had just like I left my job in Port of Spain I had two hours extra time daily and I started the gym and yeah I was real fit when we got married not yeah, anymore <laughs> I, I, I knew you were real fit when we get married um, tell me a little bit about Amazon right so Amazon will help you buy everything Anything you want. All of those things that you see on Pinterest, like the personalized um, little favors, you could get that on Amazon for a fraction of the price that anybody in Trinidad, as I am aware of today, will charge you. Because usually there's a steep, steep markup because they themselves will be ordering it from abroad. So you, they just be in the middleman for you. So you could directly contact these people, save some money, and you're getting exactly what you want. So it's it's a good it's a good hub to get everything that you need on Amazon. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little kind of um boxes we had that yeah, were shaped with men like for the tuxedos candies. for the candy yeah. and whatnot. So the way that you do that, you mass produce something. So we just got the generic bride and groom boxes and we personalized the ribbon. So that was a cheap option instead of having to write, you know, people like to write on the boxes and print it and that costs a lot of money. So we just printed on the ribbon and that wasn't, I can't, I can't remember the price. I could probably check it on Amazon and see, but it wasn't a significant cost. And you get all of these things, you order them early, you get them, you prepare and it'll just save you so much money in the long run. And this is even with the cost that you're considering in terms of shipping and everything. Shipping is so cheap now. Like it. It's no longer like this big way. Is it worth it? Shipping is not that much anymore. It's really, really reduced. You don't even pay for a, a what do you call it? A skybox. You don't pay for that anymore. You don't pay for maintenance for it. You just pay whenever you order something. So you have no monthly fees. There's nothing. There's nothing. You have to, no cost, no overhead like that. 
you are just paying every time a, an item comes in. So it, the best ideal thing would probably be to take a trip and go and get all of these things there and bring them back. But not everybody has the means to go and just up and take a trip and get everything. So Amazon is your intermediate step. And you you mentioned something because the next point that we're going to talk about is like choosing a photographer, right? And something that, that I think we should probably do because we've been recording for about 25 minutes now. I really enjoy this conversation and I would like to return to it with the points. I know I mentioned nine points at the beginning. We just three points in. <laughs> Only three? I, yeah, but I want to, that, and yeah, I, I, I would like to continue this, this conversation with you another time. But you mentioned something about Pinterest and getting certain ideas from it for the photographer. Mm-hmm. And you could you could just talk about that a little bit. So I would have looked specifically for wedding photos, photography, photography photos, wedding, and you add those pictures that you like and the, the vibe that really expresses who you are and who your spouse is. And you pin that to your photography page and you share that with your photographer. That way he has an idea for what you're looking for. Some people only like like close-ups, get me, get me, vanity, light, camera, action. They want the colorful things. Some people like artistic shots. Some people like wide frame, dark with very little light in it. They like negative space. Some people, and then you have different um things that, creative ideas that people come up with. Like in order to show your wedding ring. You don't just have to hold your hand out. You could hug up your groom and put your hand on his back, something like that. And you have a nice way to showcase the ring. You have different ideas for shoes, um, shoes and bouquet matching. You have different poses you could do with your bridesmaids, with your husband. Instead of just standing hand in front, blah, blah, blah. You're looking for things that appeal to you. Because your photographer will have a standard idea of what he's accustomed doing. Nobody just wants to see the same pictures, different people. They want different things. They want, who are you? Why am I looking at you? I want to know that I'm looking at your wedding pictures. I don't want to just feel like I'm watching a stock picture from a photo a photo frame. <laughs> yeah. That you pull and show. Because I, I remember on our wedding day, I feel like you had pulled your phone out at different times and you were showing the photographer these are the poses. I, I think there was one where I had to put my head on your shoulder and I, I think I ended up, <laughs> I ended up uh, fracturing your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't dance for the whole night. <laughs> so I, I think this is a great place to stop in terms of time, but this list goes on. And, and here's, on. folks, here's, here's what. I know at the beginning of this episode, I said nine things to consider when planning for your wedding. But we're going to stop here at number three and just to quickly recap them, they are to choose the right person, somebody that, or if you, even if you haven't, no. I, I, I think you, you have already made that decision based on love to, to choose this person and you want to spend your life with them. I think what we need to do is clarify your expectations in terms of what your, your wedding is, mm-hmm. what it means to you. Because it's very easy for from a guy point of view to just be like, what you are kind of Disney world. Boy, save well, that money for the yeah, honeymoon, save, you know? Save that well, for the honeymoon, <laughs> day, or, you know? We spend $200,000 and then we go in and get divorced anyway. So, you know, really kind of clarify what your expectations are for your wedding, was your goals, was your dreams. And if you're a guy listening to it, that you hear these dreams and you respect it. Because, I mean, that you that you, you start to take a certain amount of pleasure in it because you could make the experience a lot better for your bride-to-be and you can make the experience a lot better for yourself. And hopefully you're only doing this once. So. And hopefully you're only doing yeah, it once. This is not practice run for the next two yeah, times. Yeah, because you're never <laughs> going to get the chance to do it again, huh? No, you're never hopefully, going to. Ho- hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not. You know that this is the right person. The second thing we talked about was invitations, printouts, digitals, how you could save a lot of money in terms of using apps like canva if you're trying to really do it on a budget by by all means if you could afford to hire the designer and that course doesn't matter to you then you know so be it oh, we mentioned we tools say, like um, canva and adobe express sorry sorry we we didn't talk about the um if you're doing invitations and you want to go green and you print a little bit for your your grannies or whoever and then you have the 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 digital one sent to everybody you could enhance that 
that could be an invitation video, that could be an interactive type of invitation because of the technology out there. So it doesn't have to, you could broaden the realm of what an invitation is. And you could have like a video. You're invited. Or you could have a personal video. Hey, when you really think about it, that's yeah. so awesome that you could just <laughs> take out your smartphone now. And you film and a video. Record. But the problem is as if they forward it to different people. <laughs> That that would be a kind of big problem there. You, know, you have to Maybe, call out everybody. No, you, name. you could share it on Google or something, and, right? And allow certain people. Yes, yeah. Yes, because you could record a, a video invitation. Mm -hmm. Put your your chances are you'd have the email address or the phone numbers of different people, and, and you yes. share it with them. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a fantastic idea. Right? <laughs> And you, you talk or you about do a YouTube video and you limit it to people with the link, right? Because yeah. you could you could share things privately with mm -hmm. the the email addresses that you have, right? Or you send them the unlisted video and they say just just do share this. Do with share, everybody, hopefully. You know what I mean? <laughs> so and then you talk about apps that help things like Pinterest and Amazon. I myself were able to see somebody when we were taking the pictures at the, at the beach. Mm -hmm. for the, the party fevers you were showing Surya who had no idea of photography she's not a photographer so she's just like my friend I, and she had a camera I was like Surya is that your camera no this is my mother one <laughs> so she didn't even know how to use it too well and we we learned how to do these things we DIY'd it we looked at poses and she's like okay why don't you try this and she also has her little flair to for these um things so she was very well equipped for doing it and I'm sure yeah, everybody has access to that one friend who might be good at certain things. You use them. That's what friends are for. Friends, hey, I need your help. And you, have, you get somebody to help you out. So friends, that's, that should be on your list too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kim, tell me something. When I, I would like us to commit to posting one episode per week. In terms of posting, what day? We do, that doesn't mean we have to record it on that particular day. But what day would you like us to post episodes? Sunday night or Tuesday morning? <laughs> well, today is Tuesday night, so are you going to wait until Sunday? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> you you tell me. You tell me. I I don't think it really matters to me. Um. No, but we need we need to let people know what day we're showing up. You choose what day you like because I mean my weeks it's so hectic. I can't I can't plan anything. It's really just okay. Hey, I ha the girls are asleep. I do have to cook. I do have to clean. I could spare an hour before I go on bed to talk to you. I, I think anybody who gets married right now <laughs> will probably be <laughs> contemplating all the things that you're talking about. And we don't want to discourage any people. So folks, hear what? If you're listening to this, we will be posting episodes on this podcast on Wednesday mornings. So you could look forward to the episodes. We'll be talking about life in Trinidad, our experience as a fairly young married couple with two children. <clears throat> I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am young. So thank you very much. A woman much. in the grocery said I look young. You she's look like, young. Yeah, she's like your videos make me look. Oh older. yeah, we also we also have a YouTube <laughs> we also have a YouTube channel. So if you look in the show notes, you'll get links to Kimberly's channel and my channel and the, the work that we're doing. But in terms of this podcast, which you could find on Spotify, uh, Google, anywhere that you consume podcast, except Apple Podcast, because I have to pay for that. <laughs> 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 you you could you could tune in if you got value from this episode please feel free to share it with a friend thanks and take care bye bye bye